your business needs to talk, but it also needs to know where it stands. Let's do something about it. BizLine includes a plan with unlimited one-hour local and national calls for a fixed monthly price. BizLine. One bill, no surprises. It's a real pleasure to introduce Ray Avery, who uh, we've written about before in a previous issue. Um, you can visit uh, our website and get the story for Nix. Um, you can also see a little movie we've made about Ray. Ray is really a, a true inspiration and, and kind of embodies everything that Ideologue stands for and I think the values that um, Derek uh, just articulated as well. Um, he's a charismatic Kiwi with, he is a POM, but we've adopted him. Um, he's got a no-nonsense attitude and a number eight wire approach to life, and he's taken his challenge from his childhood uh, and combined it with a passion and a prodigious aptitude for science and turned it into a motivation to change the world. Ray runs a company called Medicine Mondial. It's a non-profit aid organization dedicated to doing things differently. Uh, Ray designs and develops simple and sustainable medical solutions for the many health problems in the developing world. Uh, and the exciting thing about what Ray does is re, re sort of reimagines the problems of the third world and shifts our thinking of people in the third world as victims to being customers, which is quite a, a radical approach, um, but certainly uh, an innovative one. Of how you could change the world really started when I met Fred Hollows, and he sent me off to North Africa. And he had an idea to, to make factories to make interocular lenses. Um, Fred conveniently died the month that he sent me to Eritrea. And when I got to Eritrea, I found a factory that was actually a bombed out schoolhouse, a country that had been at war for 30 years and had no infrastructure, no cement works, no electrical cabling. In fact, I went into the electrical cabling shop and asked for a reel of electrical cable. And he rushed out and showed me this little reel and I said, that's great, we need 10 of those. And he went into a state of shock because he only had the one reel. Because the whole country was just one reel of electrical cabling. And we were expected to build this high-tech interocular lens manufacturing plant in Eritrea. The equipment that Fred had bought didn't work. It made spinning top lenses that you couldn't see through. So being a pharmacologist and knowing nothing about lens manufacture was a good starting point because I went back and had a look at all the manufacturing technologies that were employed to make lenses and came up with a machine that would make lenses much faster and much cheaper than anything else on the market. It was a great idea, but it needed about $10 million worth of capital. So off I went to Western Australia and met with a particular investor and he invested the $10 million to make the machines that would make low cost lenses. What happened then was that instead of patenting that technology, I gave the plans to several companies in India. And of course they started manufacturing machines. So the Fred Hollows Labs and those companies in India now account for 65% of the world's supply of interocular lenses. And because we had that control, we could drop the price of interocular lenses from about $136 US down to about $7 US. And that made those lenses accessible to people in poor countries. Before that, it was a whole Sherpa's salary for a year to get his eyes fixed. And it came down to like six weeks. So this shows that you can actually change the world. The reality is that the instruments that you need are not just a great idea. You need to have business DNA. You need to have very, very good, clear marketing objectives. You need to have very highly skilled people and I've been fortunate to gather around me a collection of people that use a small percentage of their time in their ordinary day job to help change the world. And the proof of that is that today the net price of interocular lenses in developing countries anywhere in the world now is about seven to ten dollars. And we did that from a little place in New Zealand. We changed the world, we changed the, collapsed the whole multinational supply chain, 
gave good quality lenses to people. Now those uh, lenses are actually being imported into developed countries in America and Europe and being sold at large uh, sums of money. And so those labs are sustainable businesses. We're not talking about aid here, we're talking about social enterprises. And that's the thing I want you to start thinking about. Most of you in this room are reasonably successful probably at your job. But I'm going to tell you something which is going to scare you. And that is that you're all going to be used to these. You used to be the head of an investment bank. You used to be the head of AUT. Because that's what we do in our society. We groom ourselves to work in the world's 10%. 10% of the world that we think is real. There's a whole 90% of the world of customers out there in the developing world who if we thought about it, we could actually engage them. And more importantly, at the end of the day, if they're going to nail the box down, you want to be able to say, I didn't used to be the head of AUT or, or Deloitte or whatever. I am a member of Ray's mob. And what I'm trying to do is get a bunch of people together that wants to change the world. Because the reality is you don't just need scientists, you don't need doctors, you need everybody. You need investment bankers, you need scientists. Because when you start thinking about product realisation, it includes all of those dimensions. And that's the only way the world is actually going to work. But I think the sort of thing that Ideologue does is fantastic because it's a need us for the, the idea of thinking about this. The idea for thinking about how we might use our intelligentsia to change the world. Most of the big changes in our society have been brought about by technology. The wheel, DC motors, whatever. So technology makes huge leaps in our ability to change and better our society. What we need to be clever about is making sure that the products we develop are applicable for the whole world and not that 10%. Viagra was not a lot of good if you're a starving kid in Africa. In fact, there have been no new pharmaceutical products developed for developing countries that are worth anything in the last 15 to 20 years. If somebody gave me $20 million, I'd change that because if you thought about all the money that WHO and UNICEF put into aid programs, if they put all that money into putting up a string of generic pharmaceutical manufacturing companies, not only would they be making a profit, they would also be directing their R&D activities towards products for their customers, for their total customers. So I want us to just think about where we are in the world and to have a weather eye on the, on the future. Um, it's not a bad, dark place to develop in country setting. It's actually a very exciting, vibrant place. I get very excited when I see what people can do with a bit of number eight fencing wire. And I invite you all to come on that journey and become a member of Ray's Mob. Thank you.